the dog trainer wasn't really a, uh, he wasn't like a Hollywood dog trainer. He was, he was a guy that took his dogs to parties and did this. So the dog was this kind of crazy. It was like Michael Jordan just showed up only in the in the body of a dog. Yeah, so it was, it was one of those experiences that you go. And I remember the hair standing up the back of my neck after that and going, this is, this is going to be great. I don't know yeah. how it's going to be great, but it's going to be great. <laughs> yeah, we're going to make it happen type of thing. We're going to make it happen. You know, I've had that feeling a couple of times, but and I, I pay attention to that feeling. Today on the show, we are joined by the creator, director, the man behind Airbud, Robert Vince. And what a great and unexpectedly deep talk we had today. Right now, as we speak, Airbud and all the Air Buddy movies is available to stream on Disney Plus. And this re-release of the Airbud anthology is part of some bigger future plans for the series. You're gonna hear all about that in this interview, alongside an in-depth look behind the scenes of the series, the original dog, how the idea came to be, and so much more. One thing I really appreciated about this talk as well is Robert Vince's infectious passion. I smiled through this whole thing, and on top of that, we take a deep dive into his thoughts of what's going on currently in the film industry, and also give some advice for aspiring filmmakers who want to bring a big idea to life. So yeah, let's get right into it. And I think we're rolling, Robert. So nice to meet you. The legend. Nice to meet you, John. I think um <laughs> only in my own mind. Only in my own mind. <laughs> no, to me too. To me too. Um, I think what's so cool about the series Airbud itself is whether people have watched these films or not, they know the brand. They've they've seen the memes over the years and everything. And I just want to know, um, do you remember like at the beginning stages of like maybe pre-production, um, putting this idea together and doing it? And also, did you expect it to explode the way it did as like almost like a pop culture phenomenon? Well, I, I think the latter part of the question is I had no idea. Like, you know, <laughs> I, I, it, it was funny because when uh, we we did a test screening on the movie, Dick Cook and Joe Roth were the heads of Disney at the time. And, and when I was leaving the theater and like, they were just like blown away. They saw the scores from the energy national research group and they, and I was leaving and, and uh, Joe Roth, I believe it was Joe, might've been uh, Dick said to me, we'll be talking about this movie in 20, 20 years. Well, we're talking about this movie 25 plus years later. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, you know, I remember that moment. So, but and then the, the earlier part of your question is, I remember the first moment I saw the dog shooting baskets, which was on David Letterman's stupid pet tricks. I was like, that's no way, this can't be right. And so I called out the producers, got the name of the dog trainer, Kevin DeChico. He came to my office here in Malibu and with the dog and Buddy. And we set up a set up a regulation size hoop in the parking lot. And uh, and I looked at the ball and I go, This is a real basketball. Like I was expecting some gimmick. And for an hour, he played basketball. I don't mean like just fed the dog, like a perfect pass. They played basketball for an hour we had in the parking lot, probably a couple hundred kids and adult families, you know, watching just because it was throughout three o'clock in the afternoon after school. And at that moment, I was like, holy, holy shit. We got yeah. something. <laughs> this is crazy. And so we developed the script after that. And I think, you know, it was lightning in the bottle in terms of the, the story. Uh, you know, the gimmick is the gimmick, you know, the, the dog playing basketball. And I say it as a gimmick, even though it really wasn't because it was real. No visual effects, nothing. One dog did all this. Amazing. And he was a special dog. And uh, and the, the dog trainer wasn't really, a, uh, he wasn't like a Hollywood dog trainer. He was, he was a guy that took his dogs to parties and did this. So the dog was this kind of crazy. It was like Michael Jordan just showed up only in the, in the body of a dog. And uh, yeah, so it was, it was one of those experiences that you go, and I remember the hair standing up the back of my neck after that and going, this is, this is going to be great. I don't know yeah. how it's going to be great, but it's going to be great. <laughs> yeah. We're going to yeah. make it happen. type of thing. We're going to make it happen. You know, I've had that feeling a couple of times, but and I pay attention to that feeling when I'm looking at a project and deciding what movie we're going to do next. And, you know, it's just so unique. But I think that what what did make the movie stand the test of time, and here we're talking about it, what, more than 25 years later, 
is that it, it had it had a lot of it had a lot to it. It, it was it wasn't just about a game of a dog playing basketball. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember when every because everybody turned us down. They were like a dog playing basketball. That's silly. You know, yeah, so including yeah. Disney turned us down. So we made the movie uh, for for four and a half million dollars. So it was really very little money. And um, I remember Disney finally saw it and I showed I showed those same people, Dick, I think it was Dick Cook and Joe Roth. I showed them four scenes. One, uh, when Buddy first shot the basket in the secret court, another scene was the pudding cup scene. And then the fi- and then another scene was um, the one where Josh tells Buddy to go away. Uh, and at that point, they just said, just stop. You know, <laughs> you if, I, got if, I'm, if, I, if I'm crying, that you know and and they they have both had teary eyes they're like this is this is magic you know so what i'm saying is that it really is it's a boy about a boy and a dog saving each other basically a boy that's lost his father moving to a new town and a dog that was in a, an unfortunate situation and they save each other you know and it's so there's a real mat there's a real there's a real theme and magic of, behind all this it's, it's really <clears throat> it's about overcoming adversity and and really uh, that's a big part of what this movie is about, you know? Yeah, that's beautiful too. And even I believe like the timing was right too. Cause, um, I'm kind of a kid who was like born in the eighties, kind of had my childhood in the nineties. And when I was growing up, there was like the movies, like the Homeward Bounds, the Milo and Otis's and stuff. And I feel like you just caught like the next generation of that youth of like giving them their own animal movie which who doesn't love like just like an animal adventure you know and i think that's like really cool like uh with the with the timing and the next wave of everything yeah i mean like you know i I don't know you know in the end of the day when when we make movies we all hope for the best and nobody tries to make a a bad movie or and when when it when it all comes together and it's lightning in a bottle moment and you see it on the screen, like after the fact, everybody's a genius, including me. Um, <laughs> so, 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 but you know, at the end of the day, you know, it's it's really that all these ingredients have to come together to to form something that is uh, unique and and special. And mm-hmm. it has to be special. I mean, we're as I said, we're talking about it. How many years later? And it's still it's still as relevant today as it was in in you know when it first came out. Yeah, and you know, so so that, I guess that's I guess that's the the best. You know, you're never going to get an Academy Award for making family movies. So, you know, you got your Academy Awards got to be in the in the uh, the really the audience that you appeal to. Billions of people have seen Air Bud worldwide. It's just as popular here as you know in the United States as it is, or or Canada or North America or wherever you happen to be, as it is in the rest of the world. And that is that is a, I have so many stories around all that you know like being in beijing and the guy we were dealing with at ICE he was the kind of the netflix of you go guys really we're really excited for everybody to be first seen <laughs> and Chuck finally seeing seeing china he said what do you mean i grew up with everybody yeah you know, <laughs> hired it and in fact i have a golden retriever at home and oh took, yeah and then we looked outside our window um i was with anna mcroberts we were there she's the president of our company i'm like am i am I losing my mind? Like there's, there's people in Beijing walking their dogs early in the morning. Like they all go together, right? Like you don't go walk your dog by yourself. So all these people walk, like, like, like a stream of people walking to this one park and it was full of golden retrievers. Wow. And I remember, I remember asking someone, I said, how come golden retrievers are so popular? And I said, oh, because they are, but <laughs> <laughs> that's just one example to, to give you like these surprise moments I have. And I'm like, Really? Okay, that's interesting. I had no idea it was even playing. By the way, nobody paid us to play there, but leaving that aside for a moment. <laughs> yeah, at least it got advertised. So even now, like as you were releasing it, like on uh, Disney Plus platforms and stuff, yeah, like you have that audience there too. So maybe you can make the money back that you didn't make then, and like go you know, it's a, forward type of thing. Absolutely. You know, I'm just saying, it's just it's interesting. You think that <laughs> somewhere like China, which was closed and didn't have any of those. You think that you wouldn't, they would have never seen Air Bud. And then that, 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 in fact, it was not the case at all. Yeah. 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 So it, it, it's exciting. And, um, I, you know, it's the first time we've had all the Air Bud collection, which is the five Air Bud movies and the nine Air Buddies movies, you know, all together on Disney Plus. So it, there's, there's a binge, binge opportunity once you show your kids the the new Air Bud movie. <laughs> you go, 
<laughs> you can go forever on this one. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even realize how many like Air Buddies spin-offs there were. It's it's great. It's it's like a good collection and everything. And I just want to know, like you mentioned that original dog. Did he only do the the first one or was he in a couple films or like uh kind of how did it work with uh, the animal actors? No, so the, so the, the first movie was really the one dog did everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? And uh, he was just unbelievable. I remember there was a scene where we had, where the first time we were playing basketball and that we had to get on um, uh, the, the way that the trainer um, got Buddy to emote and look, we'd pull out a tennis ball and the dog would kind of follow his tennis ball and look like he was interested or sad or happy, whatever the music told us afterwards. But I remember the first day I went on set and the, the dog was like, like this all over the place and we're like what's going on this is this is a disaster and you couldn't get the dog's attention what we found out was behind the camera like way down the way is some kids ba- throwing a basketball up in the air oh, yeah <laughs> so he's so obsessed with basketball so he, he he was an amazing dog that did all this stuff but unfortunately only was with us for that one movie um, and uh you know unfortunately dogs aren't like dragons they don't last forever yeah uh, yeah but I didn't really realize how, I mean, I realized he was special, but I didn't realize how special until we made the second movie. And it took basically five dogs, all Damn. Being specific things to do the second one, which is golden retriever, which is to play, play football. So it was a, you know, it was a, with all these professional trainers training them. And, uh, but the first movie was really that dog was that dog was a savant was a, an athlete. I always say he was Michael Jordan in a dog's body, you know, wow. And we just didn't know it. Yeah. <laughs> so it probably like made you think, oh, this is going to be easy for the next yeah. movies. And then you got to like a reality check. Um, even I did an interview with the director of a action movie called Sizu that came out this year. And yeah. there's a dynamic throughout the movie with a horse and a dog and him kind of telling me like the ba- uh, behind the scenes stuff that uh, like on screen, you see them, they're buddies and then he's like, oh, yeah, the horse did not like that dog. It's all camera tricks. Like, you know, the horse wanted to kill the dog the whole film. But you wouldn't know when you're, like, just a viewer of the movie, too. So I'm sure there's a million moments throughout this series of different, like, bloopers or stuff. Like, do you have any, like, little behind-the-scenes uh, stories of, like, things working out or not working out or just, like, a little funny moment with, like, animals or anything? Well, the, the original, the original Air Bud, honestly, it was pretty, it was a pretty amazing experience with the, with the dog, you know, there were, it was, it was just not normal. I didn't know it wasn't normal until we got into the other one. So, so in the first movie, I would say, you know, they, yeah, there are a few little moments here and there, but they're not, not like, not like what you would expect, you know, because the, cause the dog was so amazing and, uh, and, and unusual. And really, truly, I say a savant, I mean a savant, like it was just like not normal. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, when you ever you make, I've made, you know, they always say, uh, W.C. Fields said, never work with kids and animals. That's all I do. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so uh, you know, there's always moments. I've worked with chimpanzees. I've worked with yeah. monkey dogs, monkeys, like camels, you know, horses, all sorts of types of animals. And I have to tell you, the golden retriever is probably in terms of an, a, a, a a dog is like the best dog. Like there's not, there's not any doubt in my mind why a gold retriever is the most, one of the most popular dogs in the world. You know, it's just, mm-hmm. it's a family dog. It's perfect. I have one myself, you know, so. Oh, amazing. Yeah. I, that was actually a question of mine. Um, just cause how could you not after like this legacy and everything too. And even um, like, it just sounds like, uh, like hearing your story of as a filmmaker, like beyond air, Bud, like, you probably like you're probably like one of the most patient men ever <laughs> just to work with all these different animals and everything. And um, I know like different filmmakers or aspiring filmmakers, sometimes they'll like tune into these segments in like almost like a way to get like some knowledge from like people who are in the professional field and everything. And I want to know if you have any like advice for an aspiring filmmaker who has an idea and wants to like bring it to life. Yeah, I mean, you know, look, I I came, I, I didn't have any connections in the film world. I I grew up in Vancouver and Canada. There was back then. Now everybody shoots in Canada and Toronto and Vancouver and places like that, but nobody did. So I mean, look, ignorance is bliss. When you have a, when you have a great idea, and you know it's a great idea, you ha- you just have to follow it through. But it has to be a burning idea, and then you got to turn it into something. So 
You know, I, I always look for, we have a saying in our company is like, what's our next stupid idea? And <laughs> nice. I don't mean like we're, I don't mean like we're morons. I just mean like we're looking for something that nobody else has seen before. And that really comes from the Air Bud days, like the dog playing back. I remember somebody said, <laughs> I think it was one of the studios. I try to remember who it was, where I got this from. But, but the way I, way I, reason we coined that term in our company was the next stupid idea is because I remember it was one of the studios said, this is the stupidest idea I've ever heard. Like, seriously. <laughs> I'm like, really? Okay. It's a stupid idea. But what yeah. I mean by it is something nobody's ever seen before. And it's very mm -hmm. easy to say, oh, and this is what the the, the streaming platforms do now because they're all working off of algorithms as if that's really helping. Um, uh, is it, is it, that's why you see, you know, oh, that one action movie work. Oh, we're making 100 action movies now. Oh, one, oh, this is Superheroes and stuff. All like right. That. Like, yeah. it's like, really, guys? That's 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 not what a, an audience, an audience is looking for something fresh, new, and in, entertaining that they have. That's going to take them out of the world, you know, you, you know, but, but I, I think that that's kind of one of the big disservices of the industry right now is the lack of imagination and the sort of the, the, uh, you know, nobody can tell you what movie is going to be a great, like who knew the Barbie is going to be a huge success. You, mm -hmm. I can just see uh, Margot Robbie walking in there and going, I'm going to do a Barbie movie. And they're like, huh? <laughs> yeah. Like what, how does that work? But they figured right. it out. You have little house. Barbie dolls walking around like, you know, it, it, so it really, it's really, it's really in the creative process that things, the execution of the creative process that you really find out when things are great, you know? Mm -hmm. like, yeah. And even I, I noticed like just film goers and stuff like that, they get excited when they see something new. It's almost like that was different in a good way, you know, because we're almost being fed so much of the same thing over and over again, like you mentioned of of just these companies kind of working with the algorithms and one thing will pop off and then the trickle down and it's just watered down versions of whatever that greatness was, you know, and it's, it's well, crazy. And, and it's even, it's even more of a sheep mentality than it ever was before because they're all doing the same thing, right? There's not that many of them before there's all these multiple play ways you could get a movie or a series. Like we would have never got everybody done today. I, I'm absolutely sure of it because we'd go to the five streaming platforms and, you know, most people you talk to, their job is to say no. <laughs> nobody, nobody. It's very. There's probably one guy or one gal that has a job to say yes, but everybody else's job is to say no or maybe, which is basically maybe means I can't make a decision, and you know, I'm hoping you go away so I don't have to um, mm -hmm. go on record. So, so it, it it just movies like this would never get made today. They just wouldn't. I mean, I'm just telling you the truth, and that's the kind of the sad part of it. Is that We've, we've the the creativity in Hollywood has been um, is really been uh, stifled a great deal, and and we hope that changes. It was always this great hope of Netflix. Netflix was doing this for a while. They were trying all sorts of things and experimenting, but they've changed that too now. Now they're mm -hmm. basically making all the same things. Yeah, definitely. And um, do you think also uh, with putting all these movies on Disney plus now for people to, uh, to watch, do you think like there's an executive going to keep a close eye on that? Almost like seeing uh, how it hits or like, <laughs> do we need to make more animal sports movies or anything? Absolutely. Like that? I, I'm telling you, absolutely. Like, this yeah. is, this is, you gotta remember most people's job is to keep their job. It's not really to do anything innovative or, you know, mm. and, and, and in Hollywood, keeping your job is not as easy as it used to be. So um, you know, but, and I'm not being, I'm not being, um, hope I don't come across as being, uh, I mean, there are great studio executives that really know what they're doing and how, but there's just the, the reliance on an algorithm is really a, or, and data, that kind of data is really a, a fool's game because mm -hmm. human beings aren't like that. You know, yeah. I might like chocolate Sundays, but I want, I don't want 150 of them, you know? Yeah. You know? <laughs> I can only watch so many movies with the same actor in them, you know, like, it's like, you know, it, yeah, it uh, diversity and, 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 and yeah, it just burns, burns the audience out and they're all chasing the same, same, same thing. So I, I love, I love to see the, these platforms being used and, and really it's, it's about the audiences too. Like we, we have to be cognizant of when we, when we decide we're going to watch something, first of all, it has to be there, but when you see something that's really good, you got to really like, you know, got to kind of celebrate it, you know, I mean, rather than and tell people about it because the word doesn't get out otherwise. Right. So mm -hmm. yeah, very true. 
yeah and there's just so much at once too it's almost uh right. even harder to break through but um even um i as i was reading like your your press release and everything it kind of had like a little teaser that there might be something next for you and it didn't say what <laughs> but are you allowed to talk about that or like give yeah, us I, can, I can talk about anything i don't really you know oh, amazing but, uh, <laughs> but but so so no we're doing it we're doing an air buddies uh animated um animated series which cool. is and, and uh, that the whole thing here is a buddy as a buddy as a puppy when oh, when nice. he grew up and what he was so we're, we're you know it's everybody's such a multi generational experience now right like millennials like yourself grew up watching Airbud and then now you know you guys are you know at that age of having kids and your parents are now grandparents so it's it's kind of multi generational and we're really the the thing about the Air Buddy is introducing the little ones the younger kids to to Buddy as a character. Um, and then sort of expanding that kind of horizon and interest. And then, uh, and we, we've had a really great idea for, for a long time. And so we're, we've been waiting. And then we, we do have an Air Bud Returns is what we're calling it right now, a movie coming out, which is kind of like, I would say equivalent to like what they did, with, you know, it's kind of what with Creed. It's not, it's not, a, uh -huh. um, it's not really like that. But what I'm saying is it's like a whole new, it's not a, a, an Air Bud 15, you know. It's yeah, an, it's, it's just it's, kind of like the same universe, different dog type of thing going on. Man, I'm not really saying that. I'm just saying <laughs> yeah. that it's unique. I, I promise you it's unique. And I've been working on this for more than five years. And I'm just waiting for the right timing for it. So we're we're there now. It's time. It, oh. We're going to get this animated series out first. We're excited about that. That's in process right now. Um, and, then, um, and then we're going to go to a, a, a new movie, which is really exciting for me. Because that, I think that... <laughs> it, it, Airbud stands up beautifully now and, and it's nostalgia and everything it is but there's still a, a story in there that I got to tell and it, it it did the same way when I saw that dog playing basketball in our in our, in our uh, for the first time and I had that hair standing on the back of my neck feeling I got that feeling again Ooh, nice. and uh, for the movie and I'm really excited about it you know yeah yeah we're gonna you... do, we're gonna do something that nobody expects and we're gonna do something that's un untold and unique and beautiful all in one and uh it, it, i i have to every once in a while i go back and i rewrite playing with the script the script's ready to go now and i'm like i'm i'm like beyond excited for it you know because you know it, it was so the, for me it was like i i can't make another air bud movie unless i do something unique uh, and take a risk and make make sure it, it really um has the same kind of impact the original air button movie had mm -hmm. impact you know like you know i i, I tell the story of a, a, a guy sort of in his 30s who i was talking to i, want, I don't want to say too much about who because it'll give away who he is mm -hmm. and he said you know i grew up in a foster home and it wasn't a nice situation for me and uh whenever i was um you know in a bad place i'd pop into the vhs i had a I made a little VHS kind of uh, combo unit, you know, with the TV mm -hmm. and the, I'd pop it in and watch everybody. They must've oh. watched it hundreds of times. Wow. That that's part of my inspiration for this, this new story is that story or, you know, or, you know, the uh, guy like LeBron James, who says he literally wore out the VHS tape growing up, you know? Wow. So, you know, it's like, those are the kind of stories that you know, have driven me to this next uh, next next moment in time for everybody is that there is something very um, because it was a real dog and a real phenomenon that impacted billions of people worldwide. We don't have to pretend like everybody wasn't real because everybody mm. was, real, yeah, you know? hell yeah. And so so we have this huge advantage, uh, and I don't think you know. Uh, without giving away too much uh, we don't i don't think anybody's seen really that in a movie like we don't have to pretend everybody didn't exist mm. you know yeah, the true. yeah yeah so so we, we got we got something here that makes me makes me excited you know as, and i'm 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 a parent and now a grandparent so you know i've been doing this for a while so i do this because i love it you know like you can hear my voice i know you can i'm like yeah. i don't I'm, yeah, even I'm people who are listening to the audio version of this, as you're explaining, you got the biggest smile on your face and it's very infectious. <laughs> you can tell like your excitement and everything is coming from a real place. And I think it's cool about like your journey as a filmmaker, too. It's uh, 
just uh, like a lesson to trust your intuition as well. Like you're saying this new one is kind of giving you the feeling you had with the original Airbud, And I think that's just awesome. And like, you're making me excited about it. Just listening to you uh, talk about it and everything. It's it's so cool, man. Yeah. The creative process is a, is there's no recipe, right? Like anytime somebody says there's a recipe to it, it's not true. Right. Mm-hmm. So your listeners are off at filmmakers are, there's no recipe. I didn't, you know, you don't know. You just, you just got to go with your instincts on it, you know, and, and, you know, I, I always, I always say you got to survive long enough to get lucky, you know, <laughs> that's <Yeah>. really, <laughs> survival is a very important trait in our business. Yeah, yeah, it's, right. but uh, yeah, you're absolutely killing it. And uh, Robert, it's such a pleasure to talk to you oh, today. Way. Like I'm, just, my face is hurting from smiling. I don't know what it is. There's something about your energy. And also it was great uh, kind of getting the email saying, oh, would you like to interview Airbud? My initial thought is like, Oh, so is like a dog going to be on the Zoom and I'm going to be asking it if it's a good boy, which I think if that happened, I would have peaked in my journalism and I would have just like retired after that. But this was just so great to meet the creator and everything. And uh, and yeah, it's I'm, I'm looking forward to see what's next in your career. Uh, thanks. Thanks for uh, keeping the family world alive, too. You know, like, no, as I said, nobody wins Academy Awards for making family movies. So you got to you got to know that you're doing it for another reason. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. And you got so many great stories, too, of how it affected people. And uh, yeah, it's just something I I often don't think about with these family films and li- like literally like people would watch them like to get their mind out of like a, a rough spot. Like you mentioned, the foster home story and everything. And even I remember growing up, I had my own comfort movies and everything. So it's beautiful uh, what you do and everything. And uh, yeah, biggest uh biggest cheers and and I, I commend you for everything man yeah thank you and and uh, you know i i love to see more not just from me but i love to see more family movies made that appeal to a broader audience of and and i, I really would love the all the platforms to think about like hey like is it really is this really what we're doing with this it, to quote my mother is this what you're going to do with this powerful medium she mm-hmm. said that after we made a movie called Bulletproof Heart, which was successful, it was a gangster movie. Yeah. And we came out of the came out of the theater, my brother and I, Bill Vince, who since passed away. And uh we he was like, my mom said, What this is what you're gonna do with this powerful because we were all proud, you know. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and um uh, that was it was like a few and she said, Why don't you make family movies? Mm. And that's and it was literally three months later that I, I I saw the dog playing basketball. So she planted it. So always listen to your mom, A and B, those planting those seeds of goodness and and you know, because hey, we'd already made 22 movies before we ever made a family movie. Wow. Well, you know, amazing. So that was an about face for us. And you know, and I actually I don't think I would have stayed in the business if I hadn't made uh family movies. So this is what gets me up in the morning. Wow, that's awesome. And that's a good seed to plant into the universe if like an aspiring filmmaker is listening to this too. It's like, can't go wrong with the family movies. They're amazing. And uh, yeah, once again, Robert, uh, I thank you so much for your time. It was awesome talking to you today. And uh, I hope you enjoy uh, the rest of your day and Uh have a great re-release on all this. And I'm excited (laughs) to see your next project as well. Oh, well, basically, if you haven't seen it, see it but, but most people have seen Airbud, so it's going to be reintroduce it to your family and uh and especially uh young ones that have never seen it i think that'd be really a special thing or and get your parents who showed you the original Airbud, get them watching with you because they love that too hell yeah pass it down <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah all right all right robert have a great Thanks, day John. take care you too take care bye hope you enjoyed this talk with creator director Robert Vince, what a legend. I had so much fun talking to him. Hope it was as much fun to listen to. And like we mentioned, Airbud and all the Airbud movies, the Air Buddies, they're all on Disney Plus right now. Check them out. If you're my age, show them to your kids, your nephews, your nieces, your neighbors with kids. Let's get an Airbud resurgence going for the next generation. And yeah, I can't say it enough. This talk was so cool. I really enjoyed how deep we went in the film industry, especially just going into it thinking I was just going to talk about some dog basketball or something, you know? It was a pleasure and a treat. 
And before we go, like always, we gotta thank all you legends on the Patreon page. First up, the biggest thanks to Mike Carniello of the Testing with Mike YouTube channel. If you're into electronics, how they work, and most importantly, how to fix them, check out Testing with Mike on YouTube. Also, the lovely Amanda McKnight of Top 10 Nerd. Beyond being the host of Top 10 Nerd, a channel with millions of subscribers, She's got her own channel. If you just type in Amanda McKnight, you can find that. And it's totally awesome if you're into comic books, video games, movies, and anything in geek culture. Search for Amanda McKnight on YouTube. Also, a big thanks to the wonderful Jenny Potter, the legendary Devin McBride, Ryan frickin' Campbell, my favorite soul singer, Saber, and last but not least, Francis Coffer aka my mom if you want to shout out at the end of every one of these episodes and also get these episodes raw uncut early right when i'm done the zoom call i just post them you can go to patreon.com slash the creative imbalance and beyond giving us a couple bucks you'll get to go to bed at night and sleep soundly knowing you're a badass motherfucker who supports raw uncut independent media and nobody can take that away from you you hear me and with that being said we got a lot of awesome episodes around the corner thanks for the people at disney for rocking with me again i hope to do more of these in the future and we'll catch you next time Ciao.